Hello everyone. Today we will talk about the confidence interval for the variance and the standard deviation of a normal population. So we have here a normal population. It has mu and it has a variance. Now we are interested in estimating the variance of this normal distribution with a confidence interval of a specified confidence level. Point estimate is not a problem. We take a sample of a good size n and then we found the variance of s or what we used to call it s squared the variance of the sample and this variance of the sample will be x1 minus mu x square plus x2 minus mu x square all the way to xn minus mu x squared over n minus 1. But that will only give us a point estimate of the variance of the population. So this is the variance of the sample estimating the variance of the population. Now if I ask you what is the confidence interval, are you going to use the normal distribution? Are you going to use t distribution? No, because here you are summing the square. You are squaring x1 squared, x2 square. If you are summing x1 plus x2 plus xn, then this will be a normal distribution. But if you are summing x1 square plus x2 square plus xn square, this random variable, if you call it a, will not follow a normal distribution or t distribution. Actually, it will follow a chi-square distribution. And the definition of the chi-square distribution is the following. If you have a standard normal random variable, so that is a standard normal random variable. So you have here x1, x2, x, all the way to xn. And they are independent. Now the sum of the square, x1 square plus x2 square plus xn square, the sum of these will be a chi-square distribution of degree n. So if we go back here, this is the point estimate. Now if I need a confidence interval, then we will be using the chi-square distribution because it represents this new random variable, which is the sum of the square of random variable coming from a standard normal distribution. And this is the probability density function of the chi-square. We will not integrate it, but just to give you an idea, v here we call it the degree of freedom, x here is the random variable, and if you plot this probability density function for a different degree of freedom, you will get this one. The larger the degree of freedom, the more it looks like a normal distribution. But the chi-square density function is skewed to the right usually. And that will make a difference when we try to find the confidence interval, the lowest possible value versus the largest possible value. And before we talk about the confidence interval, let's get familiar with the chi-square distribution first. Well, this is usually the plot of a chi-square distribution, and here this specific plot is of a degree of freedom 10. Now, when we determine the confidence interval, we always find the minimum and the largest value. So let's see how the chi-square works. First, let's look at the table here. This V is the degree of freedom in this line. This top line here, these are the probability. This is the area to the right of the chi-square value. And all these data here are possible values for x squared, the chi-square. So in this example, let's see how we're going to use the chi-square. Find the upper and lower 0.025 point of x squared 10, that's a chi-square of degree 10. So we are trying to find this value here. What is this value and what is this value? Such that the area here, alpha, will be 0.025 and the area here 0.025. Because chi-square is not symmetric around zero like the standard normal distribution or the t distribution, where if I find this alpha over two, if this came to be minus 3, then this would be positive 3. With the chi, it's a different case. You have to really look at two different values. So we're going to start with this one because it's easier. So 
I will look in the table degree of freedom 10. So that will be this line here. And alpha 0.025, that will be here. So this value x here square will be just go straight and down here. And that will be this one, 20.483, which is this. Because the table give you the value of x with area to the right. Now, if I want to find these x such that to the left is 0.025, I have to find what is this area here, including this one. So that area, the orange one, will be 1 minus this area, 0.025, and this will come 0.975. Now I go back to the table to find this value, degree of freedom 10, which is here, but the area to the right of x squared is 0.975, which is here. So I go down here, and that will be this value. 3.247. And that's how we find the upper and the lower limit on a chi-square distribution if I was given the confidence level. So the confidence level here is 95%. So alpha is 0.05. Half of it 0.025 in this area and half of it 0.025 is here. And that will be the lower limit of the confidence interval and this will be the upper limit, just like Z alpha over 2 and T alpha over 2. Now we call it K X square 10 with a specified alpha. And that's how we use the chi square table. Now that we know how to use the chi square, let's go back to our original problem and see how we're going to solve it. So we have a population normal and we need to estimate the variance of this population with a confidence interval of a specified confidence level. And we find out because variance depend on the square of the random variable x chi-square distribution will be the best distribution to find the confidence interval. So the first step, we take a sample of size n and here we have x1, x2 all the way to xn. And because variance involve squaring x1, x2, xn, chi-square is the best way to find the confidence interval. So let's start with creating this random variable x1 square plus x2 square plus xn square. Now the chi-square distribution apply only if this x1, x2, xn independent random variable coming from a standard normal distribution, not just normal distribution. So we have to standardize this value x1. In the same way we did the z score, which is z equal x minus mu divided by sigma. So now these will be x1 minus mu divided by sigma squared plus x2 minus mu divided by sigma squared all the way now this will follow a chi-square distribution. So this will be like x square chi-square distribution. And there are n of them, n sample data points, so the degree of freedom will be n minus 1. So let's rewrite this as a summation of xi minus. Now mu, if I don't know the mean, then I will estimate it by the sample mean x bar. So that will be minus x bar. And I have n components, so I go from 1 to n. And I square this, divided by the variance also squared. So that is chi square of degree of freedom n minus 1. Now I'm going to multiply here by n minus 1 and divide by n minus 1. Now this quantity here is just the standard deviation of the sample. So this is just S square N minus one divided by the variance square. And that is the random variable chi square distribution with degree of freedom N minus one. This we don't know, the value of this one here, we don't know. That's what we are after. The standard deviation here as a square, that's easy. That is the standard deviation of the sample. We have the data and the sample, we can estimate it. N is the size of the sample. 
This is just a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom. So we can say the variance equal s square n minus 1 over x n minus 1 square. That is our estimate of the variance of the population. And if we specify the confidence level, that will determine this value here. So now when we look at the chi-square distribution, if I say the confidence level is 90%, that means alpha will be 1 minus the confidence level. So that means alpha over 2 will be this area to the right, and alpha over 2, this area to the left. So xn minus 1 will have two values. We'll have a, a large value here and a small value here, and that will determine the confidence interval. So the variance here will be larger than and smaller than. It's going to be smaller than s square n minus 1 divided by xn minus 1 square. Which one? The smallest value, because the denominator has to be the smallest of these two for these to be the largest. And here also variance will be larger than s square n minus 1 divided by x square n minus 1. So which limit should this be? Which limit this should be in the denominator? This definitely the denominator here has to be the smallest value for the whole thing here to be larger than this. And the smallest value of the chi-square statistic would be this one. So then here I can replace this by x square degree of freedom n minus 1 confidence level 1 minus alpha over 2. And the one here should be the largest. So the whole thing here will be the smallest value. And that will be x square degree of freedom n minus 1. And that will be the largest is this, alpha over 2. So if the confidence level is 90%, then alpha will be 0.1, 1 minus 0.9. And this will be 0.05, alpha over 2. And this 1 minus alpha over 2 will be 1 minus 0.05, will be 0.95. And that's how we find the confidence interval with a specified confidence level. And the summary of this theory is here. For the confidence interval, for the variance of a specified confidence level. And if I want to find the standard deviation, then I just take the square root of this quantity, which is here, and the square root of this quantity, which is here. This is the minimum possible value for the standard deviation. This is the maximum possible value for the standard deviation. Let's take an example to demonstrate how we estimate the variance of a normal population with a specified confidence level. A simple random sample of 15 pistons. So we have a population. We took n equal 15 selected from a large population whose diameter are known to be normally distributed. The sample standard deviation, so they gave us S, is 2.0. Find a 95% confidence interval. So they gave us the confidence level 0.95, 95%, and they want the confidence interval of the variance. So we said the variance will be n minus 1 times s squared over its 15. So the degree of freedom is 14. And this will be 1 minus alpha over 2. And it will be larger than n minus 1 s squared divided by x degree of freedom 14 alpha over 2. So let's find these quantities first here. 1 minus alpha over 2 is... Let's calculate alpha. So alpha will be 1 minus 0.95. That is 0.05. Alpha over 2 will be 0.025. So this is 1 minus alpha over 2 is 0.975.
and here alpha over 2 will be 0 0.025 so we basically need to find this this limit and this limit this is z alpha over 2 0 0.025 this is z 14 1 minus alpha over 2 is 0.975 so again 0 0.025 is this 0 0.0975 is the whole orange with the green and if we go back to this table degree of freedom is 14 so we're going to be in this line and we need to find this first x square 14 0 0.025 so 0 0.025 is here 14 is here so that is 26.119 26.119 now we need to find this point here, the lower limit. So that will be, this here is x square degree of freedom 14, 0.975. And if I go 0.975 here, degree of freedom 14 here, this is 5.629. So that point here is 5.629. So now we go back to our example. We found this to equal 26.119 and we found this to be 5.629. So the variance square will be less than this quantity here, n minus 1, 15 minus 1, times s squared, which is 2 squared, divided by this quantity here, 5.629, and larger than this quantity which is n minus 1 15 minus 1 times 2 squared divided by this quantity here which is this and if you calculate this you should get the variance square less than 9.948 and larger than 2.144 and if i need the standard deviation I just take the square root of both sides, less than 3.154 and larger than 1.464. So the confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation of the piston diameter with 95% confidence level is between 1.464 millimeter and 3.154 millimeter. The one point estimate was two millimeter. Thank you for watching this video and our next video will be about hypothesis.